of this conference tournament. If you don't know, now you know. Johnny. Mike Nance. Our officials. SMU, the second to last team in Joe Lenardi's field. Memphis has lost two games in the last eight weeks, both against SMU. And away we go with the Tigers in possession. Let's say that again, eight weeks. This is a team that's been on a tear. There's a reason why they're the hottest team in college basketball. They go inside to Nolly. DeAndre Williams bats it up, and Kendrick Davis, the player of the year, comes away with it for SMU. First shot, Zach Nuttall, the three, and he banks it in. Well now. Yeah, Zach Nuttall's going to matter. He, he's going to have to make perimeter shots. He really spaced that defense out. You, you have to make the length of Memphis cover a lot of ground. Only 3.3 3 points per game in his last seven. He's got three on the opening possession. Landers now he controls for Memphis. There's Lester Quinones, who had a career-high 22 last night in an 85-69 win over UCF. Williams at the end of the shot clock. Didn't realize it, and Lomax's shot is late. Memphis turns it over. And that's a challenge at times for Memphis, is who's going to be that floor general? Who's going to be the leader, the, the stabilizer? Right, someone that will be aware of shot clock situations and get them into something late. And you think with some of the experience they have on the floor in terms of Nolly, Quinones, and Williams, like they should all have a good idea of, of the clock. SMU starters brought to you by Air Force Reserve. The twins, Michael and Marcus Weathers. Marcus, a second team all conference. Michael had seven blocks yesterday. Davis, not all, and Emmanuel Bandemel, the guards. And Bandemel takes Williams to the hole. <laughs> wow. Why does everybody that make a lay makes a layup now does the too small thing? You know, they put their hand and foot above the ground. 6'4", guarded by 6'9". Maybe it's an inverse celebration. I don't know. Every time I got scored on, they would do that to me. Uh, Memphis starters, Duran, Nolly, Lomax, Quinones, and Williams for the ninth consecutive game. Alex Lomax in the paint, playing some of the best basketball of his four years at Memphis. And then he pokes it away. And that's moved by Bam I mean, you've got space, and if you have DeAndre Williams, you force him to come in space thing for SMU against this Memphis defense the thing is with Memphis it, look the five on the floor are tough but they're gonna bring five more in they're just gonna be different but continue to come at you with, with intensity they have gotta watch for the run and jump if you're Kendrick Davis Davis almost lost it set up not all <laughs> missed it rebound Quinones Memphis one of the fastest tempo teams in the country and we have an offensive foul away from the play it's against Duran Jalen Duran picks up the first foul of the game. That might be a you're just bigger than the other guy foul. I mean, Michael Weathers is working really hard. Oh, yeah, he got his arm around him. That's what's going to get called for. It is amazing, John, of the two matchups this year, how well SMU has held up. They've out-rebounded Memphis, even though Memphis is so much bigger. And although SMU turns it over right here. The Weathers twins in particular yeah. had to play way above their size, and they've done that all year. Memphis trailing for the first time we got in Michael eight Weathers. halves right now. <laughs> Michael Weathers coming Jalen Duran. Nolly into the lane. Short. Rebound to Davis. The leading scorer in the conference sets up Bandemel, <laughs> who misses from three. And it's tough, though. When you have that type of advantage down low, you almost want to play to it, but it... Call him there. Foul on Michael Weathers for SMU. There's Tim Jankovic, sixth full year, seventh partial year. And SMU has been a part of championship teams in 2015 and 2017 tournament titles for SMU. Foul was changed to Nuttall, by the way. Williams in the paint, rebound to Duran, and the stop. I mean, look, if a lot of people at home, you have a little jam basketball. That's what it's like in the hands of Jalen Duran. He, he's just dominant with the ball in his hands around the rim. There are things that he can improve upon, but he's got a lot of time to improve. 6'11", 250, 18 years old out of Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania. That's going to be two. Got to improve that. And that's a huge call, and Duran yeah. is out of the game at the 1646 mark. That's just the presence of mind. You have to understand how important you are for Steam All Conference. Like I said, he just handles that basketball like it's a tennis ball. 
and under the rim. Physically down, but I want to go back to the point I was making. When you have the, the physical advantage down low, like DeAndre Williams is going to have, and Dantras is going to have, you almost slow your offense down to play to that advantage, and it does take rhythm out of the game. Weathers, a lot of contact, and Malcolm Dandridge blocks it. Maybe on the way down, who's close. SMU wanted a goaltend. Now Weathers is on the deck, and he'll be called for a blocking foul, and yeah. Tim Jankovic is losing it from the start. He thought there should have been a foul on Dandridge for the dislodge at first. He also thought... Try to avoid, like, I try to avoid saying a cliche or a chippy play, but it's the only way to describe it. Glad we just got that trip inside your brain there for a few seconds. Thank you, John. <laughs> Memphis ball. Tigers are two for six to start. Mustangs two for five. These have been two of the best defensive teams in the league this year. SMU tied for second in American Conference games. Scoring defense only behind Houston. Williams over Weathers. Air ball saved by Dandridge off the hands of Bandamil. Still going to be Memphis ball, but with only... Five and a half to shoot. I think part of Memphis's defense is just the, the way they can wear you down. Uh, they, they close on the ball at the rim as well as anybody in the country. They really do. They, they attack the glass. They close on the ball. They get on the offensive glass. They wear you down, and, and they do have depth to them. Nolly stepping back on Bandamel, left it short. And Davis will leak it ahead to Marcus Weathers. Knocked away by Dandridge. Big minutes early for him with the two fouls to Durham. I think it was Lomax who's just now joining the play. I think Lomax got ahead of that entire play and knocked it away from Weathers. But Davis gets it back, sort of. Got it back for a moment and then lost it again. I want to see that last play because I, I think Lomax is the one that got back. We just lost him because he went oh, into yeah. the crowd. There he is. Great play. A very appreciative pep band. Have yourself a trumpet. <laughs> You didn't know it was him because by the time you're watching the play come back, he was still stuck in the band. That was big time. There's a blur of See, blue. You know what? That's that's a that's a great thing to think about, though. That's a winning play, and those are plays that they weren't making earlier in the season. It was almost like they're too consumed about getting theirs, and, and they've come together. They've really gotten connected on the basketball court, and together they make more winning basketball plays. Lomax deep in the shot clock. Spinning on Bandamel. Offensive rebound. Williams. DeAndre Williams goes up and gets fouled. Tristan Clark was in there. The Baylor transfer. He picks up the personal for SMU. There's not much you can do if you're going to give up offensive rebounds. They, they are relentless about trying to get that thing back up on the rim. And the more you contest, the easier it is for them to continue to get offensive rebounds. DeAndre Williams, one of two all-conference players for Memphis. Jerry was the other. Second team selection. I last, like Williams. Last two years, John, when he doesn't play. Yeah. And this yep. is including the stretch last year where he was ineligible to start of the year. Memphis 7-7. Seven and seven. When he has played, 31-10. and 10. Yeah. No, I, I really like DeAndre Williams. I think he's just an energy guy. He can play anything from the 3 to the 5. Great communicator. And he's one of those guys that I think he understands he's probably not the best player on the floor. But it doesn't mean he doesn't have to play the best. And I think he goes out and sets the table with his play on the floor. Jordan on the bench with the two early fouls. Dandridge has been big. Williams adds a free throw. Josh Minot is in for Memphis. All freshman team selection. Remember how good Kendrick Davis was at home against Memphis last time out. 27 on six threes. Bandamel slipped. Quinones hounding him. Lomax the takeaway. Quinones steps through and missed it. Boy, Memphis is so physical. <laughs> Tim Jankovic is screaming. They're relentless. Got to be a foul at some point. He thinks Clark with a putback off the Weathers miss. It's tough, though, if you, if you don't get control of it early. What, you, what tends to happen is you start to have to call a lot of fouls late to get control of the game. Lomax was out of bounds and turns it over. I just think that's something that is an officiating crew. you got to be cautious of. They will get physical, and at some point you start to really slow it down and, and blow the whistle more to get control of the game. This is just, it's just physical. It's a fight. Nothing easy out here.
SMU playing for its tournament life. They win, they're likely going to the NCAA tournament. If they lose, it's going to be a long 24 hours. Bandamel in the Dandridge. No. They're, the hand checking is what they have to clean up. On that closeout, there was a poor closeout, and two hands go right on the ball handle. That's Minot what, stripped and Minot fouled by Michael Withers. That's what they have to get figured out. I, I mean, we, we talked about freedom of movement. And ball handlers are supposed to be the ones who are protected the most. And that is just full on hand checking to stop a drive. Josh Minot will shoot two. Freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. He was named to the American All Freshman team. Oh, he's special. He's, he's something else. And he's a guy who's just going to continue to get better and better. And the best thing is, I don't know if he has a true position. You know, everybody wants to play positionless anyway. And I'm not sure what he really is. All I can tell you is he's got a great body for the game. He's got a good feel for the game. And he's got a skill set that's going to continue to evolve over time. Benny Hardaway with some early substitutions, including Minot, who was a four-star recruit out of Florida who kind of went under the radar because of the late additions of Duran and Imani Bates, who is... Not here, still dealing with a back issue, hasn't played in the last 12 games. Don't hey, think we're going to see him again this year. When you have some of the best recruiting classes in the country year in, year out, four stars do slip under the radar. Memphis had the number two class behind Michigan this year. It took some time for the young players and the older ones to gel, but they have gelled in the last two months. Davis in trouble, got out of it to Bandamel. This is Clark on the feed, and Weathers missed the layup after a great find. Not going to get many easy ones like that. I know Michael Weathers wants that one back. Might not. He just took his eye off the ball, and Memphis has turned it over five times. And that was the issue at SMU last time out for, for Memphis. We talked about their last two losses came against SMU. They turned it over early. And they start to second guess. You start to question yourselves and you rely on a run to get back into the game. Memphis is at their best when they can just pile it on. Take care of the basketball enough, take calculated chances. Turned it over 18 times, John, in that game. A 16 point win for SMU. And SMU has just turned it over a fifth time. Davis was out of bounds. There have been five made shots in this game and 10 turnovers. You know, I said that about them turning it over at SMU knowing that you'd pay it off with a stat. You so much you have no idea if it's right or not. You just knew I'd pay it oh, off. Oh I got trust in, in your nerd alert skills. <laughs> Put a hashtag in front of nerd alert I think. <laughs> Dandridge to Nolly. Davis steps up. Nolly with a freshman Jalen Smith on him. Lomax, Davis stayed in front of him at first. Lomax gets a shot off though and scores. That was great defense on the closeout. Davis stayed low, but, but Lomax, just good body control. Lomax has gotten better when he's stopped trying to do too much. That's so much talent and potential around him. Just help maximize the talent around you, and you're an invaluable piece of this program. Weather is for Davis. Kendrick yet to score, and on a tough finish, that remains to be the case. Interception for Zurich Phelps, the freshman. He's going to take it into Dandridge and draw the contact. Great vision for Zurich Phelps, who's their top rated freshman in a couple of years. And this was coming off of great defense. Look at the patience, the poise for Lomax. If you can play old man game, an old man game nowadays is a great compliment. You play old man game, just be poised, take your time, be patient. Be calculated, operate more. 67% free throw shooter misses the first. Well, two more title games tonight. We're a couple of minutes away from the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Texas Tech in Kansas. And then the New York Life ACC Championship. 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. Virginia Tech and Duke on ESPN. Virginia Tech, the first team out of the field right now. In Joe Lenardi's view, SMU the second to last team in the field so those results are heightened on the penultimate day before selection Sunday or the penultimate day before the season I don't know what you're talking about and, you know, here's Nolly inside I think, Joe Lenardi I wonder, no, I, I wonder if um, I wonder if Virginia Tech could play their way in by losing but playing well good I just I think that stuff matters 
could SMU? Well, that's a great question. Weathers, Memphis swarming defensively. Bandabell a three. Missed it. Long rebound to Williams. They thrive after these long rebounds, Memphis. A little unsettled there. Unsettled pass by Dandridge. <laughs> take a breath. Just somebody take a breath. We have an ben official stoppage. Down. Yeah, no, Ben the most down on the baseline. Byron, Who are that two? The two. I know Virginia Tech is Virginia one. Virginia Tech's one. Yeah. Right. By the way, Joe texted us during the break to respond you. to your question. Well, so we weird, try Joe. to make you feel like part of the broadcast. Unbelievable. He said Virginia Tech can play their way in with a good loss and some help. Davis fouls Lomax. First one on Kendrick Davis. Here's the list right now. Texas A&M play Tennessee in the SEC championship tomorrow. Oklahoma is done. Wake is done. Virginia Tech and Duke tonight. That's a wild shot by Dandridge. And Davis will push it ahead. Oh, my goodness. Another player on the end line. It's Weathers. SMU has turned it over six times. They turned it over three times in the entire yep. game against Tulsa yesterday. Kendrick Davis himself has three turnovers, which is out of character. I just think Memphis can do that to you. Like, they do it to themselves. Memphis will turn it over, but yep. at the same time, they, they just create such a frenetic pace. They create this chaos. Nolly still has it hit. Dandridge poked away and grabbed by the freshman Phelps. There's Davis shimmying away, trying to draw a foul, and he scored the basket. How in the world was that not a foul? And how in the world did that go in? You're an SMU fan right now. You're starting to think, what does Memphis have to do to get called for a foul? I think, I think the officials are going to say that he created the contact, but, man, there was a lot of contact. I mean, he left my line of sight so far on the baseline. I couldn't really see exactly how he got that thing up, but it sure looked like he got fouled. There's Harris for yes. three. <laughs> the marksman off the bench, a 41% three-point shooter at 5'9". He just, he's electric. Look at that. He's going for the run and jump. Almost took it away, but when he gambles, sometimes he gives up. A good look, and Harris commits the foul on Weathers. Well, let's see what happened on this play. There's the pump fake. Y you know what? I I'm, I'm with the officials. I think he created it by putting his arm out. Non-basketball play, right? He, he created the contact. I didn't think I would agree, but I do agree. I do agree. That's a good no call. If anything, it may have been a foul for the extension. Of yes, the no, it was a really good no call. And I don't know how he made that shot. Let's be real. Eh? It was scoreless in the first half last night, Kendrick, and then he put up 24 in the second. Said his teammates said just keep shooting and then Tim Jankovic in the postgame said they told you to keep shooting huh? I almost yep. told you to quit shooting <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's one for two on the free throws. It's Memphis by three a low scoring affair past the midway point of the first half Houston awaiting the winner in tomorrow's tournament championship game Lomax up for Williams and he throws it in with a left plus a foul just spiked it off the backboard. Yeah, that's just just incredible athleticism. But to throw that pass, it, it really wasn't there. Clark was kind of playing it flat. You got to make a decision defensively. You're going to flatten that out. Then, then you can't allow the lob. You're either going to show and get back, or play that flat and then expect the defender to fight over that screen. But you can't allow the lob. Memphis. But Williams at the line, they have become a much better free throw shooting team of late. Just two for five today, but a second chance for Harris. Yeah. He's just got such a little edge about him. I'll tell you, when Memphis was struggling the most, Tyler Harris kept the energy up. He played inspiring basketball. He went out and just wanted to make plays. 
Weathers inside, and there's a foul against Nolly. I mean, Kevin Kevin Brown likes to point out that he's a walk-on. Uh, right, Kevin? He technically is a walk-on. He is a walk-on. But he just comes out and makes plays. He's constantly seeking out his shot. And if there's anybody on the floor, I'd say if there's two guys on the floor that you as an opponent can't simulate, it's Tyler Harris and Jalen Durr. And Jalen Durr is, is just one of a kind with his strength and athleticism, even considering how raw he is. But Tyler Harris is a guy like, good luck. Find somebody on the bench as a reserve that can simulate Tyler Harris in a game situation. You can't. Michael Weathers hits the first. Andrew Jabri there for Memphis. He's played some good minutes with Duran in early foul trouble. And now Bandamel's not going to leave Tyler Harris. He ain't going to leave him. He just hit two, two threes. Weathers well, one for two. SMU is two for six at the line. Good free throw shooting team, typically. Harris. Trying to get around Bandamel. That one's blocked by Weathers. He can also do that. It just isn't there. Davis right around Lomax. He missed it. Nolly. He still has yet to hit a shot. Now that's hit one, actually. One for seven. Davis on the leak out. Lomax gets up high. Oh, my goodness. Alex Lomax up top. Williams. Weathers fouled. <laughs> All right, this is just fun, man. Alex Lomax times it perfectly, really close to being on the glass. But Kendrick Davis kind of slowed down just enough. No, that's clean, good block. And then you go the other end. Same man, Alex Lomax throws it up for DeAndre Williams. I tell you, man, when Memphis gets rolling, it's not just that they're good. It's not just that they're dangerous. They're fun. I think that's one of the biggest differences from from who Memphis was earlier this season as well. Like they look disjointed. They look disconnected. They look disinterested in one another. That's the the biggest difference to me. And, and in a way, you saw it a bit against Alabama. You had that game with Jimmy Dykes, and you saw what they could be. Then they had the COVID pause where they were supposed to play Tennessee, correct? Yep. And I felt like that was a big moment in their season where you could have started to build upon something. And apparently, look, it took a few more struggles to figure it out. But, man, almighty. They're chaotic at times. Benny Hardaway's got them rolling now. Yeah, they're, sometimes, sometimes the chaos hurts them. But, man, there's just so many weapons. Look at Harris screaming for the ball on the cut. On the post. Yeah. <laughs> See the ball He's 5'9", and he wants it on the block. Nolly searching for a cutter. It's Harris. He throws it up there. He's everywhere, Tyler Harris. He's going to shoot a couple of free throws once he gets out of the SMU cheer squad. Man. Just great playmaking. We talk about that. I'm seriously, that... It's really interesting to see where their struggles will take them seed-wise because I still think they're one of the more dangerous teams out there. And you're going to have to face Memphis much sooner in the NCAA tournament than you should. Just close your eyes for a moment and imagine Memphis Gonzaga in the second half. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, you you know? think about saying Gonzaga struggled physicality, struggles with physicality. Good luck with this. This is length and physicality. I mean, Josh Minot, you, you've got you have so many rotations you can go to that can be disruptive in so many ways. And for SMU right now, you've just got to settle in. I think they've rushed a lot of shots. It's been two or three layups missed. Just and, uh, go. There you go. That'll do. Okay. Miss a layup, might as well dunk it. Emmanuel Bandamel, 16 points yesterday. He's got an early four. Harris with eight to lead Memphis after going scoreless last night. Here's Keen Jonas. 
Harris again. Harris slashing. Harris rejected by Weathers. Out of bounds. Going to stay with Memphis. Just about the same. You missed a couple layups, likely because of the defenders that are coming over. So you might as well just go ahead and finish strong. If you're He's had a lot of highlight dunks. Shoots it well, has a great feel for the game. He and Davis together have been really good. Tim Jankovic said after the game he doesn't get enough credit. And no. he's right. No, he doesn't. With Davis and the Weathers twins. Minot spinning, missed it. Battle for the ball, won by Marcus Weathers. Second leading rebounder of the American at 6-5. And Weathers is open. He will drive, and he will stuff it. SMU joins the dunk party. Oh, you can force a long closeout. You close out poorly, not under control. And you end up getting dunked on it. And that's where SMU, they can space you. They got the ball pushed up, kicked back out, long closeout, attack the room. The two-time American tournament champions, SMU, 2015-2017. Lomax back on the floor and back in the basket. Your dribble handoffs have been tough. Man. Memphis has been very physical with the handoff, holding the screen and then curling tight. I think a lot of teams struggle to defend. Davis double teams got out of it. Weathers, the super senior into the true freshman. Minot, what a finish that is. Marcus Weathers offhand doesn't matter. Super senior is the way to put it. I mean, that's an old man move. You understand? You just need to get just enough space. This was the first one. You closed too hard. And that's just a blow by and finish. The key was pushing it up. You push it up far enough, you get that defense to flatten out. This is the one. That's just a great old man move. And why not? Why not's going to get better at that? I think why not's going to learn how to play wider. Less straight up. I think that's where he gets beat at times, and that's a correctable issue for a kid that has a huge upside. Marcus Weathers at 24 years old in his third school. He and his brother Michael reunited for the first time since their freshman year as Lomax throws it to no one, and Dandridge was out of bounds. Eighth turnover for Memphis. Those are the things. Those are the things that when it's going really bad, as it, as it was at times early this season when guys weren't connected, those mistakes right there starts to lead to finger pointing. You start to see body language is impacted. You say, kind of, what are we doing? That turnover right there, there wasn't any finger pointing. It didn't change body language. Everybody on the floor just kind of rolls with it. I think that's, that's part of the development of the team. Weathers turns it over, so Memphis comes right back and gets the takeaway. Seventh turnover they forced. Williams around the Dandridge screen on the roll. Dandridge stuffs. This is really poor defense. You know, how are you going to defend the ball screen? If you're going to defend it by, by hedging up, then you better get up. And again, second time around where they've seen it just kind of play it lazily, flat, and give up a dunk. Davis stripped. Quinones emerges. Lomax to his right. Nolly to his left. Lomax. Throws it right into the hands of Davis. And then Williams picks up his second foul. Two on Duran early. And now two on Williams. While we wait for a decision from Penny, here's the SEC bracket. Texas A&M, the Cinderella Aggies, blasted Arkansas. And they will face Tennessee, who just, took care of Kentucky. you would have assumed it Tennessee would happen, right? and Texas A&M in the SEC championship. No Auburn. No Kentucky. It'll be the Vols and the Aggies at 1 Eastern, noon Central tomorrow on ESPN. Unfortunate foul trouble here for DeAndre Williams and Jalen Duran. They, they weren't really egregious fouls. That one's just a poor pass from Alex Lomax. And Williams is trying to get it. And he picks up his second foul. You like Penny leaving him in? I think you're going to leave DeAndre Williams in longer than you're going to leave Jalen Duran in. Um, not really a knock or a compliment to either. I, I'd say, look, more experience for Williams but I'd also probably argue maybe less value right the second half you need Jalen Duran in there he's more valuable in that sense you, you can play Josh Minot in place of DeAndre Williams you need Jalen Duran in the game 
Rare missed free throw by Davis. Goes one for two. The lead is five for Memphis. I say that, I don't want to take anything away from how important DeAndre Williams is to this group. He's not been Nolly's night. He's just one for eight. Weathers on the push ahead to Bandeman. SMU second to last team in the projected field of Joe Lenardi. A win, and they are likely going dancing. Weathers. Good find and a three. Will go the freshman Jalen Smith. I want to see if Memphis can get back to some ball screen action. Ball screen or handoff. They've had success with it. And this is what I say about Alex Lomax. Maybe operate a little bit more. Be a little more calculated in, in working through some, some action that's got, given you some success. Andridge instead will back in. Weathers an offensive foul against Andridge. His second foul. Counting foul trouble for Memphis. SMU with the ball down two when we return. Everybody gets That's a chance. Right. Combined in this game, there have been 18 made shots, 17 turnovers, yeah. and 16 fouls. I think you've got to settle in at some point. See the foul trouble for Memphis. Williams with two. He's in the game. Dandridge and Duran with two. They are out. Earl Timberlake is on the floor for Memphis. First time we're seeing him. Davis steps over Nolly and missed a three. There's Lomax who said a strong first half for the most part. Three assists, six points. A couple of steals, though. Three turnovers the as turnovers. well. The turnovers for Lomax, they're just... They're not necessary, and I think those are the things that if they can clean up, that just makes them even more dangerous. Timberlake, Weathers knew he had it in his grasp. Williams was not looking. Myron, you were in the Memphis huddle? Yeah, I mean, Alex Lomas kept looking at himself saying, I got it, I got it. Pity Hardaway was saying, you know, you got to make a play. And he was tapping his chest saying, I'll clean it up, I'll clean it up, guys. Yeah, he is... The kid who's in a long relationship, Myron, with Penny Hardaway. He's high school under him, three state titles. He's going to go to Wichita State. They let him out of the letter of intent when Penny got the job. Harris misses a shot. Williams is fouled. Not all saying, I got all ball. And certainly looked like he did from here, but not all will be called for a second foul. I thought Williams traveled into that. He didn't dribble and took a big step. Let's see, based on the slow mo. He totally traveled. Travel. How in the world do we miss that? I have no idea how we missed that. Like, uh, it was so bad that I was like, it couldn't have been a travel. Right? I must have missed something because it seems so obvious. I mean, there's zero pivot foot. I don't know, man. That was such a bad travel. I, I can't even tell you whether he fouled him or not. I don't think he did. <laughs> but it doesn't matter now. I can't get over how you can just walk all over the court without dribbling these days. Watch every time a guy catches the ball. Watch him catch the ball. They catch it, and then they take three steps into their pivot foot. Like, it's all good to a degree, unless it gives you an advantage. And if you're able to create space with the travel, then you should start calling it. It's like the triple step back we're allowing these days. It was a good little soapbox stretch for you. Oh, man, there, there's more coming this way. Here's the trap. Davis passes out of it. Open man in the corner. Three-pointer. No from Smith. This is an interesting time for Memphis because it's an interesting lineup. I mean, look at the group on the floor. Is this the group that you would choose to play or is this the group that you have to play? So what kind of production can you get up? Very small by Memphis standards. Yeah. Timberlake at the four, mine out the five. Harris, Lomax, Quinones. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going at Kendrick Davis with Tyler Harris. He's such a tough cover. Lomax instead, long two, it will find a home. Lomax with eight. Davis has a foul. I, I just think he, I think that Tyler Harris is such a hard guy to cover and figure out that it's just a foul waiting to happen. Lomax done a brilliant job on Davis. They're double. I like the running jump. Davis got it back. 
Davis around Harris. That'll be a foul into the body of Harris. And Kendrick Davis will shoot two free throws on the 10th Memphis foul of the half. And that is also the second on Harris. Yeah, I, I like what Penny and Staff are doing in terms of trying to get the ball out of Davis's hands, where you're just running and jumping with your two guards. You're not sacrificing your size around the rim. But you're running your two guards at him just to get the ball out of his hands. Make somebody else beat you. If you go back second half, you're going to pay it off with numbers. This is how we work together. Second half, I'm Kendrick nervous. Davis was terrific. You know, didn't do much in the first, second half. He, he really won that game for them at home. No points in the first, 24 in the second. See how we do this? It's like Tinker to Evers to Chance, except there's no Evers. I think he is like, I trust the number because it's in my head, but I know you'd know it. That's the nerd culture, John. Yes. You just have it engaged with. Davis with five. Only one made field goal. Why not? It's another try. It certainly looks like it, and then Timberlake smacks it in. I just can't get over how we allow so many steps in the kid. That's an absolute travel. There are long steps at 6'8", 205 for Minot. Memphis's lead is six with under a minute to go. They've led most of the way despite early foul trouble to Duran. I mean, good for Memphis in this lineup. Good scramble. Earl Timberlake went out to cover. We get the ball out of Davis's hands, and, and you force a tough shot. Weathers trying to chase it down. He couldn't. Memphis ball with 41 ticks to go. I tell you, if you're Penny Hardaway, you should be very proud of this lineup. This lineup has come in, and, and they've played good defense. Okay. Because you're a big country guy yourself out there in the swamps of Jersey. South Jersey, we look, we're the Garden State for a reason. It's because we grow things. We're cultivators. You certainly are that. <laughs> At least my ancestors were. My family. Still some family farms. Here's Lomax with 10 to shoot. Last possession of the half, likely for Memphis. And Lomax tied up. We're going to jump ball. Weathers will take it away because SMU has the arrow. You know, I still like what Memphis did there. They got into a little ball screen. You look for that handoff ball screen. Good things happen. You turn the corner, you force help. And if Weathers isn't there, you're going to have options. Just think this is, again, tough lineup. Tough way to finish the half if you're Memphis. But if you're SMU, you want to cut this thing as close as possible, knowing that DeAndre Williams and Jalen Durr are going to be back to start the second half. SMU's not hit a field goal since the 4:05 mark. Looking for the last shot here. Weathers fumbled the pass from Nuttall. Michael Weathers around Minot gets a look and it's erased. A blocked shot by Timberlake out of nowhere, vaporizing that layup to end the half. An appropriate end of the half it was as Memphis dominates. You see a, a good back cut or drive to the basket and just miss at the rim. Part of that's because they got sped up, tried to force a tough shot. 20 minutes to go for a trip to the American Championship game. Houston awaits. SMU, the second to last team in the projected field of Joe Lenardi. Joe says with a win, they're in. Trying to lob it to Duran here, and Landers Nolly turns it over. That's 12 turnovers for Memphis. And Davis starts the second half with a three. And then Bandamel just rips away the inbounds pass. Boy, when Memphis gets ugly, and we said when they get good, they're as fun as anybody. You can roll that around in the inverse. When they get sloppy, it is a mess. Weathers, a three for the tie. No. Rebound, Quinones. Weathers and Williams hit the floor, so it's four on four. Duran with a huge size advantage. He does not finish, but we get a whistle and a foul. It'll be Michael Weathers second. There's just not much you can do if you're Michael Weathers. But there were all sorts of bodies on the floor. Jeez. <laughs> it's just rough. Oh, it's rough. It's just a physical game. Uh, maybe a little too physical at times. There were 18 fouls yeah. called in the first half, and it felt like there could have been about a dozen more. Uh, honestly. So Jalen Durant. 
Only two points in the game for the freshman of the year. You definitely want to get him going. I understand the first pass that lob over the top. That wasn't there. Just there's an emphasis to get him going in this game because if you look at the physical advantage he has on the floor, it's it's hard not to recognize. Two for two for Duran, who had 21 points in an American tournament record 20 rebounds yesterday. He's just a he's got a great he's got a great game. He obviously has to grow in certain areas, be around the perimeter a little bit, but he hasn't been used around the perimeter. So I didn't even know how good he could be. I just think he's going to be like Bam Adebayo in the sense where he might be a better pro than he would be college player. Not all misses a three with Duran closing. Nolly left it long. Quinones crashing out of bounds. And SMU ball. Just feels like one or two possessions for SMU with this disjointed start for Memphis. One or two possessions could start to turn the game around in their favor. And that's that's kind of how it was at home last time around for SMU against Memphis. They were tied in the second half in that game on February the 20th. SMU won on a 27-3 run. Ended up winning by 16. Weathers backing in Duran with the two fouls. Duran held up well. Davis didn't want the screen. Not all. Michael Weathers. Three-pointer and a two-point game. And yeah, that's the problem with running two at Kendrick Davis. If he's able to pass out of it, one extra pass gets you a wide-open shot. Hard to scramble out of a double team like that. Not just the leading scorer in the conference, but third and assist. Willing passer. Duran fumbles. Active hands right now for SMU. Nolly taking charge, and Nolly finally gets one to go, plus a foul. I tell you, man, it, it is physical out there. There are two hands on the ball handler. I mean, everything's a battle. I mean, there's a grab from Bandamel, kind of a hook from Nolly, lots of contact. I mean, it's just going to be hard fought. I think this is going to be how this game is played. It's a tough finish from Nolly. It was Michael Weathers who got called for the reach-in foul. He may have made less contact than the other two Mustangs, but that's his third. I still think if we went to six fouls and you called fouls early and said, this is what we're going to establish as a foul, I think it would allow the players to adjust a little bit as opposed to what we see now is we called a ton of fouls, but there were even more fouls that weren't called. We could have a really choppy second half with all this contact. Officials got together and confirmed that it was Weathers with a foul. Nolly hits the free throw. Three point play. Just tell guys on the way, stop foul. This is what you want to say. We want to see good flow here. Got two good teams here in the semifinal. SMU trying to play their way into the NCAA tournament. Weathers will sit with the three fouls. True freshman Zurich Phelps is in. Williams all over him, and Williams picked up his third. That's one of the, the challenges with Williams picking up. There's, there's no real reason to play defense 40 feet from the basket if you're DeAndre Williams. There's just no real reason. I think run alongside is a good way to do it, but no reason to really try to slide with a guy. Not all. Couldn't finish over Duran. Wow. And Nuttall and Weathers are behind the play. It's a five on three. Quinones will take it. Quinones will make it. That's a, that's a big answer. I thought there was a ton of contact on one end. They had numbers and they took advantage. Smart of Quinones to take the first open shot when you have numbers. Davis lost the dribble. Bandamel there to bail him out. When Durant is such a presence when they try to dribble oh, he inside. He's a deterrent. He's just a deterrent. Not all. Weathers into Williams. Fourth foul on DeAndre Williams. And, and this is where this is where things could get interesting. If you can play out of these doubles. So if you play out of these doubles and attack guys with foul trouble, like Duran, like Williams now with four, that's gonna be a challenge. And that last three, look, he, he made that three because they had numbers. He had numbers because there was a lot of contact on the other end. 
the air guitarist his celebration. There was a lot of strumming on the sideline. Williams will check out. And if it's going to be physical, then, then it's us to, up to SMU to adjust up. You know, you play Houston. <laughs> we know what Houston's about. You played Memphis twice. You've beaten Memphis twice. You, you've got to adjust up to the physicality. If they're going to let a lot go, now the problem is you can't push back, right? That's that's the challenge. That's the guys that always get the foul called against them. Low match. Turbo to the cup. Another gear there from Alex Lomax. Memphis has gone with two bigs now. Dandridge and Duran on the floor together. And Davis's shot is spiked by Duran. Oh, he went down hard, though. Duran is down. Yeah, Jalen Duran went down hard. The play was stopped. I'm, I'm guessing SMU will have possession. The play was stopped right about when SMU got it back. This is a big, strong kid in, in obvious pain. I mean, what a play. I mean, what a, what a play. It's breathtaking, really. Hey. And you hope this is just... The wind knocked out of him or something that looks scarier than it actually is. You could hear him hit the ground, but you I mean, see wrist and everything, but I, I just kind of marvel at this kid. I got to tell you, like the presence, the body, the development, and the fact that he's still raw in so many ways. It's also just a good looking dude, man. He's just got a, a presence about him as a body. Not a demanding dude as a teammate. Duran is 17, or he was 17 when he came to Memphis. Imani Bates was 17 as well. Imani Bates has not been with the team for a while, dealing with a back injury. And, you know, like a lot of 17-year-olds, Imani Bates has not looked physically up to the challenge as always, and that's not a slight on him. Not a lot of 17-year-olds are physically up to the challenge in college basketball, but... Duran is just one of those specially built athletes. Yeah, you know what I want to do? We got these draft profiles. I, I want to do a college basketball profile in these guys to start telling people about how good they are now, what they do well right now, how they impact their team right now. I think there's so many special stories out there that we don't tell. We only tell them if, if we think they're going to be a first round draft pick. Duran will take a seat. Harris is in, so Memphis goes a lot smaller. Not often you lose 14 inches in a substitution. Phelps has an open look. Well short, Lomax darts back for the rebound. Switching defense, more disruption from Memphis. Dandridge is screen, that's an offensive foul. He pushed Davis up high. Three fouls on Dandridge, four on Williams, Duran on the bench. Memphis going to have to gut it out, but they've got the lead at the under 16 of the second half. He's he's just been, like we said, he, he's a deterrent down low on the defensive end, and then offensively, he's just such a weapon. You could throw it into him. You can have him play off the ball. He makes good reads. He gets to lob opportunities. He's just been one of the more impressive guys in the country in terms of development and not just the skill set, but development in terms of a feel for the game. To not have him on the floor, that's significant. Weathers tries. Now Weathers is fouled. He also just, you hope he's all right. This is an NCAA tournament team. I don't think there's any more questions about that when it comes to Memphis. Malcolm Dandridge has just picked up his fourth foul. So Williams with four, Dandridge with four. Duran in the locker room. What is Penny Hardaway going to do here? He's going to go small with Earl Timberlake. They had to go small a little bit in the first half. SMU's not a big team. Maybe that works in their yeah. advantage, but 
the good thing for Penny is at least he has options. Not a lot of teams yeah, could survive does. this. Now, the interesting thing is you go small. Are you going to continue to double-team Kendrick Davis? Because having a bigger lineup out there, you have a rim protector, you're going to be a deterrent. Well, you don't have that rim protector out there right now, so I don't know if you can continue to trap and get the ball out of, of uh, Kendrick Davis' hands. There's not really a five on the floor for Memphis. It's five-man Timberlake. Or not a five Nolly. on the floor for SMU. <laughs> well, Weathers plays like a five, at least. Nolly into the paint. Rebound to Bandemel. Thrown ahead. There are two players down behind the play again. Davis finds a cutting Michael Weathers. Michael Weathers poked away by Lomax. Swats it out of the air to himself. A third steal for Lomax. They are relentless on the basketball. Active hands. Terry Harris wants one. He wants one. You can feel it. He was hunting. Timberlake spins into Weathers. Tipped by Nolly. Out to nut all ahead to Davis. They're playing taps. Bandamel. Flush. Wow. Tyler Harris. Tyler Harris just took a horrible spill. He just took a really bad spill on that contested lay or contested dunk. So Dandridge with the four fouls is the sub. Williams wanted to be the guy. He will not be. It is Dandridge with the four. This is really an interesting time. Down four points. And it just feels like momentum's going the way of SMU. You know, Weathers will try to draw the offensive yeah. foul if he can. He's already done that once. Quinones in the lane. No. Fight for the ball. And a tie up SMU possession. Timberlake and the Weathers exchanging words. <laughs> what are we doing? Let's go. Play on. What's going on? Why are we? What are we doing? It's a jump ball. Let's go, guys. I still like the run and jump. It's just going to be hard. Dandridge back in the game. You have a little bit more of a deterrent. I'd like to see Quinones just lock up. Just see if you can lock up. Nope. Davis got around him. Now Dandridge is out there. Davis couldn't yeah. pick the pass because Quinones was all over yep. him, and then Davis fouled him. I think Quinones is tough. Now, he gets beat because he gambles a little too much, but he's really active with his hands, even from behind. Sometimes playing defense from behind is a good thing. You've got help behind you. You get beat. You just, you just kind of funnel the, the ball handler where you want him to go. Kendrick Davis, one assist, four turnovers, only two for eight for the field. It's as well as anybody's played him yeah. defensively. Well, I like what they're doing. Again, the run and jump. Just, just get the ball out of his hands and don't let him establish any sort of rhythm to this game. They got Nolly on Davis with the two fouls, and Nolly turns and scores over him. Found the matchup they wanted and exploited it. Well, and this is where, if you're SMU, you've got to watch. And, and if this trap's going to come, if you're going to run two at the ball, you've got to have a counter to it. Weathers hesitates and then picks up steam in the paint. He's such a smart player. What's he listed at? 6'5", 215. Right? Plays like he's 6'10". <laughs> Tim Jankovic said, inch for inch, the Weathers yeah. are the best players in the country. 6'3 and 6'5. Again, Nolly against Davis. Lomax. Nolly got by Davis in the air. Lomax with four to shoot. Lomax. And that is something. It's a travel. It's a Memphis turnover. I think it's hard. Like the offense got stagnant because they tried to play to Landers Nolly with that advantage. They had the size advantage. They kept trying to go to him. The problem is if it doesn't work right away, it just takes you out of movement in the offense, takes you out of rhythm. Tyler Harris back to the scorer's table. SMU plus seven in the turnover margin. Memphis plus 19 on the glass. No for three. And it's a one-point game in Fort Worth. Just wonder, Tyler Harris coming back to the score table. That's a tiger bomb on that leg. I wonder at which point you come back with DeAndre Williams. Dandridge facing up, looking for Nolly. 
Lomax around the screen. Jumper is short. SMU can take the lead for the first time in a long time. Lomax thought he got hit. Weathers missed it. Davis got to be careful. Almost yep. picked up his third foul. Williams is at the score. So now is the time for Williams with the fouls. Nolly in the nuttle. Backing him down. Way in and out. David. will shoot two. This is getting good. It's an SME. We're also interested in the, the health of Jalen Duran, who made a great play and went down hard. Looks like he's getting his hand or wrist checked out. Myron? Yeah, fellas, he walked back out like he was going to go back toward the bench. Then all of a sudden, a team of Memphis officials ran back to start taping him up, and then he went back to the training room. So no idea what's going on, but he was holding his hand wrist area that entire time. Thank you, Byron. It didn't look the way he fell back. He put both his hands back, and you know he's played enough basketballs, had that wrist sprain or, or fracture. Weathers free throws have given SMU its first lead since 7-6. No Duran. Harris is on the floor. Williams is on the floor with the four fouls. Here is DeAndre Williams. Here is Tyler Harris driving on Bandamel. Four to shoot for Lomax. One to shoot for Quinones. That's a shot clock violation. 17th Memphis turnover. That's the best defense we've seen from SMU so far in this game. Now, part of that is due to the fact that this is a much better matchup for SMU. You're not covering some of the size. You're able to switch more often than you have all game. Let's see if Memphis can continue to do what they've been able to do on the defensive end. I wonder if they're going to keep running two at Kendrick Davis. Weathers into Timberlake. That's blocking foul. You like the call? Yes, I, I do. I, he, he slid in front to take the charge. Not to play defense. I, I think... The idea that we we move over just to take a charge and that's really not the play The idea is move to play defense that that says flop if anything else now, I think he did everything right if he stayed with what he did before he fell back It would have been great defense and possibly could have been a charge And to Michael Weathers Harris left him. That's a goal 10 by Williams Harris just turned away and count the basket for Weathers Just a miscommunication, and well, they got that one right. It's a 9 nothing run for SMU. Both fan bases up, starting to really get loud here. Best environment of the weekend for sure. <laughs> he got it away with another one. <laughs> it's a clear Quinones, tough catch, couldn't finish. Timberlake can, and a foul. I'm telling you, at some point, we've got to figure it out. Like, there are travels on the floor that are just so obvious. That's something you can obviously fix. And how about Timberlake just coming over to make a play? Physical finish, gets it to go. I feel like every basket's going to be hard fought. Like, from here on out, every basket. He has seen his minutes really drop of late, Timberlake. But he is needed tonight. <laughs> And he ties the game with a three-point play. He'll be a hero. And, and to be a hero in a situation like this, you just have to make simple, good winning basketball plays. That's one of them. Snaps the 9-0 SMU run. All tied up with a spot in the final on the line. Davis flanked by Timberlake. Davis. Bandemel late in the shot clock. And a foul underneath. Who's it on? It's Williams. He's done. DeAndre Williams has fouled out of the game with 10 minutes to go. Look who's checking back in. 
Williams is asking for review. You can't review a common <laughs> foul with 10 minutes to go. I, I like Williams. I really like Williams. I, I don't really know where the foul was. Wow. Probably on the block out. Maybe right before that. Let's see. On the block out. Let's see where he gets him. I don't know. That's just a lot both ways. Boy. And I have bias for both those dudes. <laughs> I like Marcus Weathers and I really like DeAndre Williams. I just don't see it. With what we've seen in this game and what people have gotten away with. Taking five steps and... I mean, that's two guys tangled up. Yeah. I understand. Just take It takes a key player out of the game. I just... Oh. As a neutral observer, it's frustrating. It's frustrating not to see the yeah, best players on I the floor. I want to see the best players on the floor. If You're he hits exactly him in the face, right. great. It's a fifth yeah. foul. Good news is Duran's in the game. Bad news is Williams is done for the rest of the yeah. game. And Duran has that left wrist heavily taped. Oh. I think Duran's presence alone, whether he, he has to contribute a lot offensively, his presence alone is enough. How about Earl Timberlake? Minutes dwindling. Productivity's there. Got the last five for Memphis. We're tied again. It's always relentless entertainment with the Memphis Tigers. <laughs> it's a circus at times. Well, this is a team that's really grown together, and they've certainly grown on me. We got Davis on Duran here. Davis passes out of it. Oh, Weathers wow. is stripped by Lomax. Another steal for Alex Lomax. Now you got a matchup. I like this. Play to the matchup. Man, this is this is going to be an interesting finish. Harris for three. Not quite. I wonder how effective Duran's touch will be. You're right about the yeah. presence. You wonder with the left wrist heavily taped if he's going to be comfortable passing and shooting as much. Is he catching lobs? Is he blocking shots? Is... He's just such a big, strong kid. His just presence alone is going to matter here down the stretch. I like the idea to go at him. You don't think he's probably not going to put his hands on you in terms of a hand check. I'd like to go at him. Weathers will go at him. Lomax. Deflected pass. Michael Weathers keeps it in. Bandamel somehow kept it in himself. And he flushes SMU in front. <laughs> Tim Jankovic is just smiling. He's just smiling. There's no way to break that play down. Now that's a blue moon sight. Jank smiling on the sideline. Lomax doesn't use the screen. Bumps into Weathers. Duran. And the wrist looked pretty good there. Duran is just a, a man amongst boys here. And he's going to have to be dominant down low. I mean, he's just going to be able to impact again. The there you go, another block. Certainly an impact. Timberlake saved it. Tyler Harris doing jumping jacks wants the ball. Oh, Harris, after Nuttall nearly took it away, Harris slipped. Weathers the long step. Marcus Weathers over the top. That's a man's tipping. He actually didn't overtop his brother. You have to figure he used him as a springboard in the backyard once or twice. Uh, Harris punches it out. Not all with a takeaway. Not all lays it in. Memphis fan, your heartbeat's going now. If you're a Xavier or a Wake Forest fan, your heartbeat's going now. Wow, it's just all about playmaking down the stretch here, and sometimes it does. It looks like a circuit. Go. Joe says if they win, they're in, which means if you are out in Laramie, Wyoming, or in Cincinnati, or at College Station, or in Norman, or Winston-Salem, you are pulling with all your might for the Memphis Tigers. Try to knock SMU potentially out of the field. You want to eliminate bubble teams, which is just a weird way to do it, right? You have to root for others' demise. It's just the reality of where we're at at this point in the season. There's a foul away from the ball. 
Marcus Weathers. And this is our under eight timeout. SMU still up four. This game has been what we hoped it would be. <laughs> chaos. Absolute chaos. But Go we ahead. wanted that out of this game, and we're getting it. SMU fighting to secure a bit of the NCAA tournament. Memphis trying to go 12 and 1 in a 13 game stretch, get to the title game after they looked dead in the water two months ago. Quinones inside, muscles in, and draws the foul. A chance for three for Lester Quinones. I'm not sure where the foul is on that. I think it's just a great play by Lester Quinones. I, I don't I think this is just a play on, man. Creates some contact. He jumps in. That, that's a good play on. Great offensive play from Lester Quinones, who I think can really impact this game. But we need to get some flow back into this game. It's just been too choppy. Not all's fourth. And Quinones missed it. Quinones is one of those guys who's kind of learned how to play around the guys with him, right? It's taken some time to kind of figure out his role, but still be aggressive in his role. Weathers has Durant on him, leading the way with 16. Marcus Weathers trying to go baseline, and he turns it over. Michael Weathers has one assist, five turnovers on the night. He's really struggled. Lomax trip and fouled, and that will put Memphis in the bonus. Another hard fall in a game that has seen about a fall a minute. Oh, I mean, he just tripped on his leg. I, I don't. I actually don't think that's a foul either. It was Michael Weathers fourth. It's not a foul at all. I mean, that's just the player going to run. This has been crazy, man. Like this is Lomax 72% free throw shooter for a one and one. I don't want to harp on officials. You don't want to harp on no, officials. Nobody no. wants to harp on officials, but it does have to be said that given the contact that's been allowed to exist, yeah. some of the recent fouls and some big ones, fifth fouls, fourth fouls, yeah. have seemed comparatively slight shall we say I mean, come on let's go back to deandre williams fifth foul i mean his fifth foul is almost one of those calls you make to say guys we're going to clean it up right but it was his fifth foul it took one of the most important players off the floor so yeah we'll see how it impacts the rest of this game the game tied again our sixth tie of the evening I like this matter. They're gonna still run two at, at Kendrick Davis. He needs to draw two and out of that draw You need to find out who's gonna be open Davis only eight points on the night two for ten shooting Davis tough one gets it to go <laughs> Over the outstretched arms of Duran. Oh, there was just nothing good or smart about that other than the finish He took on the entire Memphis defense when you're the player of the year, sometimes you don't have to be good or smart. Yep. Memphis getting into its offense very late. Nolly into Bandamel off the window. Weathers mistimed his jump. Timberlake's got it. He sticks it back in. How about Timberlake? He's been terrific. What a second half. Oh, just effort. You know, go out and be physical, make plays. He just took it right away from Marcus Weathers. Seven of his nine points after the break. Weathers has Duran switched onto him. Weathers. Bandamel open. Rebound to Duran. Yeah, I'm surprised Bandamel got that wide open. I mean, so much attention right now on Kendrick Davis and making sure there's two on him. Someone's going to get left open. You got Duran calling for it. Six inch advantage on Marcus Weathers. He passes it away immediately. And Quinones hits a three for a Memphis lead. Oh man, this is good. It's getting good. Hope we can create some flow here down the stretch. Let the teams figure it out on the floor. Big answer. Weathers on the find. It's Phelps, the true freshman. Again, that double team is going to create opportunities if you can draw them, suck them in, and then find the open man. One extra pass, as they did just there, gets you an easy one. 
Nolly, a lot of contact created with Vandemel. Nolly scores. Yeah, a lot of contact. Vandemel wanted a push off. Certainly seemed like Nolly cleared space. See what Kendrick Davis can do if he gets two to come his way. Right, you gotta give him space, huh? They're letting Quinones handle it right now. Timberlake comes out to flash. There's the double. Davis dribbles away from it. Davis, no foul. Wow. wow. Davis is down, getting up late. Five on four for Memphis. And Nolly is fouled. You know, usually conference player of the year gets that call. 318 to you. It could go either way. Who could make the plays down the stretch in this battle between the freshman of the year, Duran, the player of the year, Davis, and their respective units? Landers Nolly at the line, and Nolly is 78% free throw shooter with a big miss. This is where it stands. SMU has everything to play for. Second to last team in the field, according to Joe Lenardi. With a win, they are likely in. You would say they control their own destiny. Just want to see if Kendrick Davis is able to impact the rest of this game. They have sent to his way. He's been able to create. And shoot, he's taken on the entire defense. Someone else is going to have to make a play. Oh, he lost it on the way up, Davis. And then he got fouled by Lomax, who reached in. And he'll send Davis to the line for a one-and-one. One. Lomax has had a good but interesting game. Can you go ahead and read me some yeah, of his stats here, to. Kevin? 12 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 7 turnovers. <laughs> Four steals, two blocks. Two blocks, that's the best. He's <laughs> two blocks in there. You can quantify the defense on Davis with the four steals. Yeah. Only to a degree. Yeah. Because he has disrupted so many of Memphis' possessions. But I think he's been good on the offensive end, too. I, I think good things have happened with Alex Lomax at the point. I think he's gotten much better. I think some of the turnovers, yes. You, you got to get rid of some of the turnovers because some of them are just entirely careless, like getting stuck in a bad spot, not having the poise to be able to just gather, pivot, make a pass. That's like kind of all part of the product, though. Nolly trying to take over late, feeds Duran. He backs it in. Injured wrist and all. There's just no answer on the floor for Jalen Duran. And I think SMU is better with the smaller lineup, so you got to stick with it. You just got to fight. Not all wants it. Didn't take it. <laughs> Check right off the bat. Davis, Weathers, around Duran, bumped. Shot no good. Altered by Duran again. Duran's just holding his ground, man. He's he's tough. You're not going to get your body into Duran and move him off his line. He has two blocked shots. It feels like he has about eight altered shots. Yeah, and I think with Duran, it looks more physical than it actually is. You know, you try to get into his body and you bounce backwards. Nolly driving. Up for grabs. Nolly got it back. Missed it. Timberlake is there. Throws it on the rim and it wouldn't go, but he'll shoot two. Man. Petty Hardaway should feel good about the fight in these guys. They just continue to attack and Look, Dern's holding his ground. There's a little bit of contact, but that's been allowable contact. You try to kick yourself into that body, and you bounce off. Can't say enough about just how much of a deterrent he's been when he's inside at the rim. Earl Timberlake, 58% from the line this year. Penny's had to really coach with feel this season, too. Constantly adapting. Just feel games out. Who can I go with? Who, who do I have? Who's got foul? It's constant feel. And if he gets through this credit. one with all the foul trouble and the injuries tonight, <laughs> just... this might be his masterpiece if they can yep. survive this. Weathers will try Duran again, and Timberlake's Timberlake. there. Almost tied it up. He did tie it up. No, oh it's a God. foul. Oh, it's a oh, foul Lord. against Timberlake. Oh, Lord. Ow. It's a tie-up. 
I was going to get annoyed that they called tie up because I thought it was great defense. Let's see it. Get a little hands on the ball handler. That's oh man, that, that's a. This game is leading the season for me in replays of calls with which I disagree. And we haven't even shown all of them. <laughs> Weather is one and one. He missed it. That being said, I, I do want to point out Memphis is a tough team to officiate. Yes. They, Houston is a tough team to officiate. I think Wichita State last year was a tough team to officiate. A lot of teams in this conference play a physical brand of basketball because you have to beat Houston to win this conference. Nolly. Got Weathers in the air. Couldn't finish. Duran bats it to himself. Missed it long. Scramble for the ball. One by Nuttall with a minute and five to go. SMU down four. Everything to play for. Davis, the player of the year. Weathers will take it. No. Rebound. Lomax. Do you foul? I think you got to at this point. Four. Yeah, extend the basketball game. Memphis has a couple of timeouts left here. They don't use it. Still no foul. Nolly is fouled. Yeah. And that'll be a two-shot foul with Memphis in the double bonus. Davis is third. You can see playing it out, and this is a spot where you don't want to foul. You want to put the trap on, but Davis was fouling. Bandemel was... Shouldn't have gotten the call on Bandemel. Who was that on? Was it on Davis? It was on Davis. Okay, so they got the call right there. But you had him in a trap situation. That's not the spot where you want to foul. Now Memphis is not a good free-throw shooting team, no. but... Nolly is a good free throw shooting individual. He was so big in that win at Houston last month down the stretch, hit free throw after free throw. Really the signature win of Memphis's season on the road at Houston. Yep. Snapped Houston's 37 game home win streak. Oh, and Nolly's good. They're much better. He's a tough matchup. He's a big guard. Two for two for Nolly. It's a six-point game with 40.6 to go. Now, how quickly can you get into something here if they're going to run two at you through Kendrick Davis? You, you can't take time. And I would not bring help up there. Get out of his way. Bandemel almost feels like he needed three at this point. They're down six. So much time has come off. Davis will take a three. No. Rebound. Duran on the deck. He is fouled with 21.7 to go. I just don't understand in that situation why you bring guards up as if there's going to be some sort of ball screen. All you do is you bring help up. Get out of the way for Kendrick Davis. He's one of the best players in the game. Look, he's Player of the year in the conference. Get out of his way. But how about Jalen Duran with the rebound? See him pounding the court as he goes down. Memphis has been impressive. And look, the game, I think, back and forth, it's been overly physical. And Memphis is showing just how tough they are. Well, whoop that trick, Chad, has <laughs> sprung out about the Memphis fans. Duran, two free throws. <laughs> Timeout taken by SMU. We're going to take Ooh. a 30-second break with them, but don't go anywhere. Where you're outmatched, outsized, fought back, maybe you didn't get some calls through your way. I mean, this has been a great game. Duran can make it a three-possession game at the line. And he will. Has to be immediate for SMU. Weathers will drive it into Duran. Contact, no foul. Gets the two. Weathers throws it to the official. And SMU takes its third timeout. He gunned it at the official. I don't, I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> I did. I mean, and coaching the team. They are oh so close to a third meeting with Houston. A team they've beaten twice, but Tim Jankovic's Mustangs are going to defend like their season depends on it here because it does. Lomax will inbound. 
searching for Nolly, deflected, out of bounds. This will be reviewed. Uh, definitely yes. tipped by Phelps, for sure tipped by Phelps, and okay. it is going to be right, Memphis ball, but we'll look at it. Uh, let's see. I, I mean, I don't know what the we call need to look the floor at. is Memphis basketball, the previous play is under review. Phelps tips it. Nothing there. I don't think so. No, let's move on. Well, I think this is a quick one to look at. Let's go. No, no way. No, no it's just, I think we got it. We're, we're good. So Memphis has not turned it over since the 721 mark. 19 turnovers, that's a big story, but credit to the Tigers. It took them a while, yeah. but they were finally able to get into some action and to handle the ball down the stretch. They did it. Now it's about getting the ball in bounds and, and making some freeways, free throws and, and based on who they have on the floor. I see Jalen Duran's shooting 62%. Buster Quinones is a 77% shooter. Tyler Harris is up there about 88. Landers Nolly 78. So, so they have some free throw shooters on the floor. Question is you got Alex Lomax taking the ball and ultimately you want to have a guy taking the ball out who you can trust to make a good decision Officials are also looking at the clock Obviously, it's gonna be Memphis ball. It, it's something should run off but uh, Seventeen mm -hmm. Whatever it is, let's roll. <laughs> just, let's go. I know the idea is to get it right, but like the reviews, it does give an advantage to a team that's now able to set up defense. Let's roll, and now you can't move. Now it's a dead ball. So you, you're in a tough spot here in this corner. I think it's a tough spot to inbound the ball, inbound the ball. And if I'm Jalen Duren, I'm getting ready to come up and and be an outlet. This is a really After tough review, spot. The to call the, the floor is confirmed. It is Memphis 16. basketball, 16.3. I don't on know the game how clock. they got 16.3. Maybe the clock didn't start right away, and that's they had to add it up or deduct something, or whatever. <laughs> whatever is right. Jamar Young is in the game to guard the inbound. Lomax into Quinones, fouled. At 15.4, Quinones, 77% free throw shooter, will take two. It's just a strong play from Quinones, right? Just kind of block out, hold your ground, get the ball. And I think if you're Penny Hardaway, you got to be proud of the guys that stepped in. Earl Timberlake in particular. I, I mean, you've got to be proud of this guy who's just come in and fought hard. And I like the game plan in terms of sending to it Kendrick Davis he done a good job in this game making it difficult for the conference player of the year Davis just picked up his fourth foul as well Quinones hits the first two possession game at the moment this one would make it three Weathers and not all are in for SMU Timberlake in for Harris for Memphis swear if you're SMU and if Davis is gonna come back and get the ball don't send anybody his way you're just bringing help Space out if they're gonna double him which at this point you're not gonna double Stay out of his way That should do it three possession game 15.4 to go Need some kind of miracle now SMU Weathers driving missed it Duran, And he was out of bounds SMU ball 9.7 to go the MAC championship is coming up here on ESPN 2 we'll get you there Shortly right after with it But I think that's not giving them enough credit and I've said that look I've been tough on this team because I expected so much of them this year You can't say it's just about them getting healthy. They've come together. They've gotten connected They found chemistry with one another. They found trust for, with one another and I think that's what is most commendable and I think Penny should get credit for that yeah. more so than just getting these guys healthy and then having them available No, they've come together and that's what you should get credit for the most It's over in Fort Worth Memphis has survived 70 to 63 It will be Houston Memphis 3 in the American Championship